Hey, what's up everyone out there? Thanks so much for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. Today we're out here doing some walleye fishing. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to just show you guys a really quick, basic trolling setup. So if you're looking to learn how to get out and troll for some walleye, that's coming up next. Okay, so first off, let's introduce, this is J-Rod from J-Rod Angling. You, you're over here in kind of like Eastern Washington area. You do a lot of walleye fishing over here, right? Yep, yep, so what I pr pretty much target all year round is walleye. Walleye, yep. and you, you do some content on Facebook and stuff like that where you post pictures and do videos and seminars and all that kind of jazz? Yep, I got some how-tos, uh, anywhere from setups to how to fillet and cook the fish. Cool, so we'll have a link down, the, down below if you guys wanna check out some of J-Rod's stuff, but let's just dive right in, dude. So starting off, like, if guys are just getting started, what are they looking for like rod wise? And you don't have to mention specific brands or anything like that, but like what what would you, if you were going to the store and buying a walleye rod to get out here and troll, what would you what would you be looking for? Uh, for a good bottom walking rod, I would target uh, more, I would go more towards the length, anywhere from a seven, six foot, foot rod to possibly an eight, six. So anywhere from like seven to eight foot, basically they're gonna be good. What about action wise, like medium heavy, medium? Yep, you want something, a, a medium light with the facts, fast action tip so you could so you could pretty much see the bottom okay so you want to be able to see those little light ticks happening as your bottom yeah, walkers and with, the, with the heavy back with the heavy back yeah. so reels do you prefer a line counter reel is that super important when you're out here doing this for bottom walking it's not it's not it's just a matter of feeling the bottom but when you start transitioning to crankbaits you want to have a line counter reel just so you could have the repeatability so if you're out 100 feet on your line counter you could just repeat that process with your line counter when we're doing crankbaits when you're doing crankbaits yeah. so if you're going to get into trolling at all it's probably a good idea just get yourself a line counter yeah. you guys know we always talk about the okuma low pro cold waters super solid line counter reel if you want to get that but i would say just get a line counter reel because in the long run it's going to benefit you having one of those yep. is Colin got a fish on Unbelievable, missed it, live on the tutorial. <laughs> Way to go, Conan. Okay, so what about line? Braided line is your main line? Yep, I go braided on all my stuff. It's all it's all braided on my main line, yes. And what's the pound are you typically using? Uh, I'll typically use anywhere from 12 to 15 pound braided line, uh, as much as 20. I wouldn't go any more than that. Okay, you don't want to put more drag in the water, kind of is what you're yep, thinking there. Yep. Okay, so let's dive right in and go right to the meat and talk about the setup and how we get this thing rigged up. All right, so this is your standard L-shaped bottom walker, and they come in all different uh, size, uh, weights, sizes, uh, and they kind of want to gauge that by, per depth of water you're fishing. So for example, if you're fishing in 10 feet of water, you want to go with the one ounce uh, lead, and so on and so forth. 20, you want to get two ounces, and then 30 or 30 or more, this uh, use a, thir a three ounce bottom a three walker. Ounce. So how yeah. big do the, the bottom walkers go? Uh, typically in store you could probably find them three ounce but a lot of guys they pour their own and they can get them up to like four or five ounce if they four really or five, want if you want if they to. really wanted to yep cool yep so you got your standard uh, l-shaped bottom walker and this little area right here you clip onto your main line and so you'll clip here from your main line and then now you got this swivel over here and you just get your presentation well let's reel up one of these rods real quick okay we can actually kind of show them how that works and then talk a little bit too, just talk about how this works, because this little wire is technically kind of dragging the bottom, correct? Yep, and that's what you want to do. Walleye tend to hang out uh, in the in the bottom of the water of the water column. I mean, like to the bottom. They're hugging the within bottom within a foot of the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So this is going to have you on the bottom, and when you're actually trolling along, you want to have that. You want to feel that little tick, tick, tick on the bottom. And that lets you know that you're actually fishing. Once you start dragging this thing, you tend to hang up more but you always kind of want to have this just ticking, just ticking along bottom, just like that. And that's what that wire is for, it's kind of an indicator. And with that braided line, it kind of, it acts like a shock absorber, so you feel it, you feel it through that braided line, uh, ticking, ticking along bottom. Yeah, that's what I've noticed. And one yeah. thing I always do as I've become, you know, more and more into walleye fishing, depending on where you fish, a lot of times I hold my rod. You can see these guys behind us, they're holding their rods. Because what happens is you're going through all these humps and stuff, and if you don't just continually adjust your depth and make sure that that bottom walker's right in the zone, you're probably not gonna catch as many fish as your buddy next to you who is sitting there adjusting it if you just throw it in the rod holder and kind of let it ride. Yep. So let's unclip this guy, okay. and then you can kind of walk through and show people, start to finish, how to rig this up. 
All right, so, okay, you got your, if you want to take it back just one notch, I have a, this is a fluorocarbon leader right here. So it's actually attached to my main line via a blood knot. It's right there. So I attach my leader, fluorocarbon leader, to my main line with the blood knot. Then I go down to this, this, uh, this snap, and this is actually a crankbait snap. It's got that oval, ovalness right here to kind of give your, your crankbait. So I use this rod for crankbait and bottom walking. This is a versatile rod. Anyhow, Perfect. So we got our, our snap, and then so we're gonna So quickly, go before you move on, what's the point of your fluorocarbon bumper? And what he's talking about, guys, that's a leader there that he's basically attached. If you wanna use a blood knot, a double uni knot, any, any knot that you know that will attach braid to a leader, you can use that. Yeah. What's the purpose of that? Well, I, I know walleye are not line shy. They, they, you could, you could have tied straight to the braid, but me, I like to go in a little stealthier with the, with the, the aspect of it being a little invisible under the water, the fluorocarbon. So, just as an angler, just to, you know, to build it's confidence, my confidence thing, yeah. to build yeah. up a little bit more, is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the, with the fluorocarbon leader. The other thing I like about adding a bumper on there is a lot of times if you're fishing in like a rocky area or something like that. They seem to have a lot more abrasion resistance than braid does. If you get on the wrong rock and braid and, and set the hook or do whatever, I mean, sometimes it'll just cut that braid instantly, so. Yep. So, again, standard. They actually, there's another setup too that we could possibly show in another tutorial. It's a, it's a, it's a slider uh, bottom walker weight, but we're using a fixed one today. So that's just gonna go right here. And we're just gonna snap that in. So now we're right here and we're just gonna put our presentation on the back of this and we'll be fishing. And we got a couple of them. We have one we use, it's it's a super slow death setup. Uh, this is this is highly recommended if you're gonna be fishing the Columbia River. And we also have the double hook setup where you actually put the whole crawler on here and you hook it, those, those two, those two uh, hooks on there right there. And that you can see he's got a trailer hook way back there, and we're gonna dive in and kind of show you what that what's that for, because we're gonna put a little tasty piece of bait on there. But stay tuned to see how we do that here coming up next. Yep, and it's pretty much to a again to the fluorocarbon. If I don't hook myself to your fluorocarbon leader, then I have just a little barrel swivel, and that's gonna hook to this back of this bottom walker right here. The reason I like this setup too, if you're getting out and wanting to catch some walleyes, it's so simple. There's not much to it at all. It's really easy to get out here and catch these fish and they're damn tasty. Yep, I agree with you, Marlon. So these these setups pre-packaged or you could tie them yourself. So it's as simple as getting the package, unwinding it, putting it on your on your bottom walk, and you're fishing. So on your leader length there, what, what do you prefer? Do you like to go, you know, I heard Pete talking about how he'll run like a shorter leader and you're running like a six to seven. So what do you think? Like, does it matter? Can you go with like a three foot leader or do you think you should have a six to seven foot? What should guy, if a guy's just getting started, what should he start with? I say, especially if you get, cause these come out of the package usually about six foot. I say you run that six foot and you clip from there and you shorten it up from there. You could always clip away, you can never put on. So if you go with that and you clip two foot and that's not working then and you're, you're stuck with there. two yeah, foot, yeah you know so i mean especially if you're tying your own stuff i would uh, just standard go longer just go longer that you can kind of adjust from there i know with the shorter leaders i like to uh, have better success when in fishing and inside of weeds uh but the longer leader gives this presentation a more lifelike uh because it's floating around it's back floating there around, kind of swinging all happy back there with its night crawler yep cool all so right that's pretty much it that's the bottom walk uh, set up I could actually put a worm on there yeah let's want. show let's show how you do a worm on like say a guy runs a double hook setup let's show how that worm would be attached okay. and then maybe show how you'd rig it on the slow death okay. there let's get one of these nice juicy crawlers so off the bat if I'm gonna run a, a double hook that one's too small for me this one it would be ideal for the slow death so I'm gonna put that guy back and see if I could dig for another one and this one's looking a little bit better so if you notice on your crawler you have the collar of the crawler is up here and you're going to grab your first hook and all it's real simple all you do is just push it through nothing crazy no threading nothing just just like that and then you want to take the the end of the crawler and you don't want to go to the end of it you want to kind of leave this line with a little kink in it that way when this 
crawler gets into the water, it'll cre it'll stretch out and it w wants to do it right now. It'll stretch out and it'll give it that nice motion. So as you can see, that's pretty simple to rig that double hook setup, but show them as well, like this is a pretty popular hook that a lot of walleye fishermen use. Yep, it's the super slow death hook. It's it gives a, it's a cam action hook and it just, it has a, a significant bend in it where it gives that crawler an irresistible movement that walleye can't resist. Just spinning. It's just spinning and it just, it just drives them crazy. Okay. So yeah. So and you said you like a little smaller worm on this one. Yeah, yeah, a smaller worm and, and or if you have a large crawler, uh, pinch off the back of it. I'll show you how to do that right now. So pretty much you got your standard slow death hook. I'm gonna grab this crawler right here. And this is this is actually on a smaller scale, but uh, and before I actually do that, uh, a buddy of mine actually showed me. You got you know you got your crawler that always wiggly and squirmy and stuff. He actually taught me that you just you grab the crawler and you just hit their head on the side on the side of the boat and it actually stuns them. So now he's not as squirmy. Uh, this guy probably could have got a couple more hits, but so it'd be easier to handle. Basically, is what you want to do that so you could thread it on because this one we're actually going to thread on as opposed to the double hook where we just hook it through. So you hook the top of the head all the way through the hook and you just kind of follow it you just keep going through and a lot of these slow death hook have a little tag end of line right here you actually want to poke the top of the worm through that and it kind of acts like a grabber and then right about there you want to expose the hook and then again you go through that and then you're there it actually the tag end actually holds it in a little bit better and then kind of poke out your your hook and there she is and again this is a small size smaller scale uh, worm but again if you had a bigger one we just pinch off a little bit because with these slow deaths you don't really don't want to be you know if you're dragging that, that worm back yep. there too far you get yep. a lot of short strikes right yep yep they'll just bite that tail off yep and okay I so now that we've got the setup so basically it's pretty pretty simple addicts you got your bottom walker to your main line down to your setup and then J-Rod's gonna show you basically how to drop this thing in the water and then we're gonna get trolling and hopefully catch a fish. All right, let's do it. So when you're gonna drop, so you got your L-shaped bottom walker and your presentation, you never wanna drop with that going this way because you're just gonna tangle up. If I drop that, my leader will get tangled up in my bottom walker and then I, I got a big mess. So this is actually how you want to do it. You always want to have your presentation well behind your weight setup. And once you got that exactly how it is right there, then you're just going to want to drop. And then once you hit bottom, you kind of just get comfortable with it. Feel the bottom, engage your rail, and then now you're fishing. And the main thing walleye fishing is, is being, being on the bottom or close to it. Yeah, that's what I've learned a lot is if you're not in that bottoms, if you're not down there, you're not even in the zone. You're not even in the game. You're just on a boat ride, yep. Exactly. Yep. Okay, Addict, so there you have it. Set up, start to finish. I wanna give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Filetaway Fish Mats, for helping make these videos possible this weekend. We have a link down below, as well as a discount code, walleye15. If you wanna head over to Filetaway Fish Mats, grab yourself a Filetaway mat, get it on your boat, help you fillet up some of these walleye, tasty, and eat them. Stay tuned, hopefully now we can catch a fish on this setup that we just showed you. Fish on? Fish on. All right, perfect time. And there we have it, look at that, we got a fish on in the front of the boat. Let's see what he is, is it, is it a Walter? Walter Python? What is it, what is it Pete? It's a little bad. Up, oh, Smalley. <laughs> Not the target. Not the target, but we'll take it. So there you have it everyone, it wasn't the target species, but you can see how this would be super, super effective. You can cover a lot of water and it really, really does work for filling up your fish box with walleye. Appreciate you showing everyone out there, J-Rod. If people want to get a hold of you, we'll drop a link down below. You guys can check out his Instagram page. Thanks again. We'll see you on the river.